about the Trinity. No, really, it's good for us to think about these things and meditate on these things and remember what is true and what is false, right? MC means multiple choice. A, B, C, D, whatever. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Nobody's going to get an F. Nobody's going to get an F. Okay? All right. I want to make you think. These questions are to make you think. And if I just keep on lecturing and lecturing, you'll just nod off. You'll just nod off. But if you look at these and you have to make an answer, it'll make you think. What did you say, Tammy? I'm tired. I am tired. I hope I'm not too. hope it won't go over my head. I'm tired. <laughs> Maybe it'll help you stand up. Pay attention. <laughs> I saw last, uh, not too long ago, I had a meeting at, at the elders meeting on Saturday morning. I mean early, like 6 o'clock. And Matt Sink, you know, one of the assistant pastors here at Pinedale, he stood up. Why? Because he was sleepy. <laughs> so maybe if you feel like you're getting, getting too sleepy, maybe you can stand up. <laughs> All right, here's number one. Number one, three persons of God are A, in the unity, B, distinct from one another, and C, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and D, all of the above. What do you say? Most people say D. Good. Good. It is D. All right, you get a point. All right, we've got some scriptures. You know, i got a lot of verses, but I just picked a few. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ... And the love of God, that makes two. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, that makes three. Three persons in the Trinity, not one. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. For through him, Jesus, talking about Jesus, through him we both have, the Hebrews and the Gentiles, both have access in one spirit, one spirit to the Father. Three persons. Okay? That's Ephesians 2.18. In unity, there are three, the three are in unity. Three persons are in unity. And three persons are different from each other. They're distinct, but they're still together, one God. Okay? Now, number two. Let me explain. Jehovah, maybe you're thinking Jehovah, Yahweh? No, Jehovah, that's the name in the, in the King James Version, and Jehovah Witnesses Bible says Jehovah, and other Bibles, translations don't have this. Maybe one or two more, I'm not really sure, but anyway, Jehovah is one that name came up after people a long time ago wrote the Hebrew word Yahweh and the Hebrew word did not have vowels like A E I O and U. And Yahweh was spelt like that. For my study, it's interesting. From Germany, they pronounce it Yahweh. Sounds like Jehovah. In German, a long time ago. I'm not talking about Hitler's time. No, I'm talking about a long, long time ago. Way long time ago. So, Jehovah means God. That's the name of God. It does not... It, Jehovah... It's not required that that's what you call him. It, he's talking about Jehovah. Oh, that's how you sign it, Jehovah. You must 
use that Yahweh or Yahshua for Jesus Christ? You must use that name to be saved? No. You must use it in communication with people? No. If the name Jesus, you use the name Jesus, and then other people, other countries, language, they may say the name Jesus, but it's different spelling. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The point is we know who we're talking about, that person of Jesus Christ. He's the one that saves us, okay? That's why I want to let you know. Some people out there believe that you have to pronounce the Hebrew name Yes. In King James Version, Jehovah, we know who we're talking about, okay? In three persons, B, I'm sorry, wait a minute, go back. Number two, Jehovah is one. Wait a minute, is that, is that in Hebrew? It's from, I saw that on, uh, uh, who was it from? Is that Jewish? No, I saw them signing this verses and jo and oh, I think it's something on Facebook. Or Facebook. Or <coughs> Jehovah is one, A, in three persons, B, God, or both. <laughs> ah! <laughs> see, see, they're both. He's both. God is one. He's one. He's one of the two persons, and he is God. So the answer is C. I saw one on Facebook. Somebody posted. It said, "Which believe the Trinity or one God?" And a lot of people said, "Number one." A lot, but they're both. It's both. Both. C I S J O Jira. Is that the same? The Jehovah what? Jehovah Jira. Jira. Jehovah Jira. Jira. Is that the same? Jehovah. Jehovah Jira. Jira. I think is the Hebrew name for God, the Healer. Rabbi, all that stuff. the provider. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like there are different names for Jesus. Jehovah Nissi, oh, Jehovah, <laughs> yes, different names. Okay, look at this verse in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. God is one. In 1 Corinthians 8, verse 6 says, Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all are all things, and for whom we exist. We're here for Him. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we exist. Really, all it's saying is God is one, but Jesus is one of the three persons. Two. That's what this is saying. This is what this is teaching us. Three persons, but Jesus is one of the three persons. God the Father is one of the three persons. God the Father is one God, just like Jesus is one God. It says one Lord, one God, two. Okay? Genesis, 
Yahweh. And then you see uh, Yahweh or Elohim. Yahweh is one. Huh. Did y'all get that? Did you understand what he said? Did y'all hear what he said? Okay. Now, number three. <coughs> God is not one person who took three consecutive roles. One role at a time. He's, he's not a God that did that. Why? The Son is not the Holy Spirit. The Father is not the Son. And the Holy Spirit is not the Father. I'm not. I'm not. These are not quick trick questions. This quiz is, is uh, designed to make you think about the Trinity, okay? All right, let's look at the, number four. Each of the persons of God is of the same what? Body? B, essence. C, flesh. <laughs> B. <laughs> essence. What does essence mean? Father, the Holy Spirit. Oh, what, what? Father and the Holy Spirit and the Son. Come on. One word. One big word. What is it? Being. Being. That's his nature. His nature. You remember before I showed God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit all in one? That's His essence. That's right, B. I hope that helps you to really put these things in your mind and, and they will be clear to you. Okay, let's look at these verses. Jesus, He is the radiance of the glory of God. He's the Father. And the exact imprint, like a copy, it's the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe, everything. How? By the word of his power. That's it. That's how powerful he is. After making purifications for sins, what he did on the cross, he was buried, he rose again for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty of royalty on high Hebrews 1 verse 3 so Jesus and God the Father are the same they have the same essence they are the same being okay now in Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 it says for in him the whole fullness of of the deity, the Trinity, dwells bodily. That's in Jesus. When we see the full essence of the three persons, if we say one person, God's one person, it doesn't make sense. This this scripture does not make sense because Jesus was in a body. He was the full deity of God in body form. That's the essence of God. Okay? Number five. Let me explain a little bit about this. The Christian faith 
That means those who believe in Jesus Christ were Christians, we're believers. The Christian faith is not Unitarian. What does that mean? I know some of you are saying, what's that word mean? I'm going to explain it, okay? A, one divine nature is possessed only by a single person or a single acting subject. One person doing, doing the act. B says neither A and neither of A and C. C says one of the divine natures is the unity. So which is the right answer? Maybe you're confused. Let me give you a hint, okay? We have some churches that are called Unitarian churches. And what do they believe? One God. That means one person and that's it. recently said unit one unit is one 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 person God's one person that's what it's talking about so any judge said I was confused and that question was confused and I didn't really understand the question <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right any church that believes that God is one person they're called a Unitarian church Okay. All right. Why? This makes it clear. Matthew 3, verse 16 and 17. Talking about the bat when Jesus was baptized. What happened? Remember the dove descended? That was the Holy Spirit. And then he heard a voice from heaven saying, You're my beloved son. It was obviously there were three persons involved in there at the baptism. Okay? God himself, three persons, each person can independently live, exist, on their own. Is that true or false? Or C, not exactly. Stand. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Jesse? Baptism. 
but you're talking about in general could live independently uh, right this wasn't related to the baptism yeah he did this so they could not live independently because God has will and Jesus and the Holy Spirit follow God's will so they all have the same it's the same will right yeah good hey there's a, that word unity it doesn't say independent in John 10:30 it says I and the father are one that's his nature they cannot be separate from one another Jesus said to him there was a person he was talking to the person said reveal to me your father show me your father and he says have I been with you so long and you still do not know me Philip whoever has seen me has seen the father how can you say show us the father in John 14 9 so it sounds like one person God in one person no they can't be because the verse different verses teaches the Trinity so this is not talking about one God and Jesus and God the Father and one person what that means is that the disciples had already witnessed and seen Jesus's character and Christ his example showing kindness and love and compassion and being humble and all those things and that's the God the God the Father's characters that's what the characteristics that's what this means if you've seen Jesus you've seen God it doesn't mean that God the Father and the Son are in one person if that was true if they were one person it conflicts with other verses that talk about the Trinity it would not fit okay everybody good all right here's another verse it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth the earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters Genesis 1 verses 1 and 2 so there was God the Father the Spirit of God two of the three persons in the Trinity not one person I can't remember the exact verse in Genesis it says let us make man in our image, in our image, yeah. God means Elohim. God means Elohim. That's what he's talking about. In the beginning, God was Elohim. The three, the three were there. The three persons were there. Multiple, yes. Not one. Yeah, Robert's right. Oh, she's saying C. Okay, wait a minute. You jumped ahead. <laughs> right, God. God is mono, with the, theistic, which means one. Monotheistic. One God. We worship one God. A, true. B, false. Or C, not exactly. It's one God, but three. Yeah, we one God. But it doesn't say three persons. It says there's one God. You have to say yes. God, one God. Or no. A. True. One God, one being, right. One being, three persons, okay? 
Number eight. This explains the most concise definition, accurate doc definition of the doctrine of the Trinity is one God and many gods? No. That's polytheism, meaning many gods. And C, three gods of the same essence? Yeah, that this part's right, same essence, but not three gods. One God. Okay, number nine. All the attributes, is this attitude? Good attitude, bad attitude? No, it's character, God's character, his love, his kindness, his mercy, his holiness, all these various things, the, the character, all the attributes, all of them. This is how I sign it. That apply to God the Father, also apply to both B and C. <laughs> oh, no, no. A, both B and C, B, Jesus, C, Holy Spirit. I saw Stan say A. <laughs> both B and C. Yes. Are you honest? Did you say A? You being honest? All right, good. Now understand, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are the same, the same character. They have the same character. It's not like God the Father has these characters and the Holy Spirit has missing some. And No, they're all the same. There's many verses that explain and substantiate that. Jesus' character, God's character, the Holy Spirit's character. Okay? God's character is omnipresence. You all remember what that means? <laughs> you remember, Tammy? <coughs> omnipresence means everywhere. He's everywhere. <laughs> David, King David says, where shall I go from your spirit? If I go to hell, there you are. If I go to heaven, there you are. Everywhere I go, there you are. His spirit. You're there. Who's the spirit? The Trinity. Okay? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Okay? I don't know. He didn't. We'll ask him. <laughs> What's this? Omni Omniscience. That means he knows everything. He's spelling it, so I don't think so. Omniscience. That means he knows everything. Known to God from eternity are all his works. This makes it very clear. Known to God from eternity are all his works. Acts 15, 18. He knows everything. He knows it all. He knows it all. In Psalms 145, verse 7, it says, Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. That means that his understanding and knowledge of things is infinite. There is no limit. It just goes on and on and on and on. He understands everything, everything. There is no limit. Abundant, what does that mean? It means plentiful. That's how I sign it. Omnipotence. Means all powerful, almighty, all powerful. 
He is the radiance. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature. He upholds the universe by the word of His power. He can control just by His word. He can control the universe. Okay. another verse that supports omnipotence. Whatever the Lord pleases, He does. Whatever He decides, He will do it. He will do it. He will get it. He does in heaven and on earth and in the seas and all the deeps. Everywhere. He is powerful. Okay, number 10. I got hurt. Number 10, each person of the Trinity is God, A, B, a part of God, and C, not God because all three persons must combine. Wait a minute, Joanne says. She's trying to make up her mind. She's sitting on the fence. Okay, I'm going to explain this. Hang on, hang on. C means God and is not God. Jesus is not God and the Holy Spirit is not God. Until they're all three together and then that makes God. That's what I think Joanne said. Oh, hey, Alan said, hey, they're going to debate. Remember, Jesus is 100% God, so how is that possible? Father is 100% God, so it's A. A. Philippians 1, verse 2, it says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So they're both. God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So God the Father is God and it's God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit is are all God. Waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of our glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. That's in Titus 2 verse 13. Okay? All three. One more verse. Let's look at this one. Remember the story about the man who tried to lie and say that I'm gonna give, I gave you all the money from selling the land. Remember, but it wasn't true. He had Peter said, "No, you're lying to the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> you didn't lie to man, but you lied to God." That's what Peter told him. He said, first, you lied to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and God are all, all God. Okay, number 11. The Holy Spirit must be distinct from the Father and the Son. What's that mean? Remember, God the Father, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are all, each individual ones are God, one God, yes, three together are in unity, yes, but they are three different persons. Remember? They're together, but they're three different persons. And they work, have different jobs. A, he said B. Oh, B is true. True. <laughs> again <laughs> Jojo said again I'm confused <laughs> okay in Acts 2 verse 33 let's see if this makes it clear being therefore <laughs> exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit received the promise 
the Holy Spirit from the Father. He has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. That was the Holy Spirit. His function is different than God the Father. God the Father was there. The Holy Spirit came down upon them. He's one person of the Trinity of God. Okay? Jesus must be distinct from the Father and the Holy Spirit. A, false, B, true, or we don't know. No. B. <laughs> true. <laughs> See, let's look at this verse. In the beginning was the Word. Who was the Word? Jesus. And the Word was with God. He was with God. And the Word was God. Jesus himself was God. John 1, 1. Okay? 13. Each person of the Trinity has a distinct center of consciousness. Like if a person in was in a coma, they had no it would not have any consciousness they're just lying there but you all of you here you're thinking you're meditating you know what you're thinking about you have consciousness so each person of the Trinity has a distinct center of consciousness which one a true B not all persons has it and C, only God as a whole has it. Which one? Most of you are saying A. Right. <laughs> so look at this. This is very interesting. Robert, come here a minute. You don't mind coming in front of the camera, do you? Do I get a star? Okay, this, he's, he's the son. I'm God the Father. This is interesting. Look at this. It says, But the Son, He says, Your throne, O God, He's talking to Him saying, O God, <laughs> is forever and ever. The scepter, the scepter like a king uses, of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, he's talking about Jesus, your God, he's talking about me, God the Father, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. That's interesting. God is talking to Jesus as saying, oh God. But they're separate, but they're together. Two persons. Still in unity. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> in John 14, 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit will teach them things. That's his job. That's his work. It's not like, you know, the three, all three of them are thinking the same. No, they're individual. And the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all that I have said. All that he's taught, the Holy Spirit will help us remember what Jesus teaches. That's in John 14, 26. It's not the same as Borg. You know what Borg is? You know what that is? From Star Trek? The Borg collection? It's not like that. Remember Borg? All of them were in unity, but they had one brain, one unit. They were all like... <laughs> no, it's not like that. The Trinity is not like that. 
All right, 14. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, B, the Spirit of Christ, C, neither of A and B, or D, both of A and B. Yes, it is to me. It's a trick question. It's hard. It's hard to understand the Trinity. It is. D, both of A and B. D, D, A, D. D, D, A, D. D. So look at this. Romans 8, verse 9. It says, You however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. The Spirit of God dwells in you, and anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. If he does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to God. The Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ. That means unity again, that unity. It doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit's here, Jesus is involved in one is one person in God. No, there's unity among the three persons. Three together. Three together. They can't be one person. It can't be. Because again, you notice it says the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ. So there has to be two persons there. And with the Holy Spirit, that makes the third person. Fifteen, like the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit speaks. False, true, or we don't know. The Father and the Son, she says false. A, she says true. True. Most say B. Stamps are say <laughs> B. It's true. Let's look at these verse about the Holy Spirit speaking. <laughs> the Holy Spirit says blah 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 blah. You can read this for yourself. In Hebrews 3 verses 7 and 11 through 11. It says, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, He is... <laughs> one of the three persons. He is not one person. Three persons. Christ spoke, God the Father speaks, and the Holy Spirit speaks too. is like God the Father speaks, Jesus speaks, and the Holy Spirit speaks too. That's the point. God the Father says, tells him what to say. No, God the Father and God the Son and the Holy Spirit are all have the same message, the same truth, the same message. And Jesus, when he came down in the flesh, he said, God the Father has given me and I give to you. That was a little different, but still, Veronica, Valerie says they're all, they all three speak. Jesus speaks, you know, in the Bible when it's read, yes, that's what that means, but the whole Bible, the Word of God, God spoke it, is God spoken. We're talking about Jesus speaking on earth, yeah, it's in red in the Bible, it's in red when he was on earth, when he spoke. Okay, 16. Which one is right? 
God is one. He's not multiple. God is one and his name is Jesus all the time. God is one and three at the same time, but not in the same way. <laughs> see, 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 most people say see, yes. God is one and three. So remember, B, we can't do, we can't say it's B because some people, some churches like PC, believes that God is one and his name is Jesus all the time, period. No Holy Spirit, no God the Father, just Jesus, and that's it. But this is the Trinity. One God, all three persons, their work is different. Like the Holy Spirit speaking, God the Father speaking, Jesus Christ speaking, but all are one God. Okay? I'm confused. Before it said, the question said, all are the same time speak? No, 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 no. It's different. At different times they speak. Yes. It's okay. We forgive you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. 17 says, how is God one? How is he one? How do you explain that? How is God one? A, God is in essence, but three in person. B, we can't explain it. And C, neither of the above. <coughs> Is that your final answer? Yes. <laughs> It's true. He is a mystery. But his essence is three in three and one. It's one God, but in three persons. I don't like you, Joanne. I don't like you. Well, I love you. Friends, I love you. Eighteen. Essence means the same thing as <laughs> Z. <laughs> One B. <laughs> Yay. Joe ain't got that one. 19. If we don't believe in the Trinity of God, we don't believe in that. Then we are saying A. Then we deny God's unity. Let me back up just a minute. If we say no, there's no Trinity. And then we A. We deny God's unity. <coughs> Scripture clearly teaches unity. B. Then we affirm that there is more than one God. Why? Because the Bible teaches God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. If we deny the Trinity, then we're saying there are three gods. C. Then we have erred from Scripture. Or D. All of them. She's going to the corner. 
all of the above. If we deny the Trinity of God, remember I explained <laughs> God has is unity. There is unity. They have to have unity. And if we deny that unity, if we deny the Trinity, that means we deny the unity. It seems that we have three gods. B. And C, we have erred from the scripture. So all three of those are true. The answer is D, all of the above. <laughs> and to understand and keep it in there and don't forget. Are you gonna are you gonna put this on blog? Yeah, I'll put it on blog tomorrow. <laughs> Which one of these is the answer, Valerie? Is it important to you personally? How why is that so important important to you? Anybody want really quickly want to say? I think it helps me to really deeply love God more. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. That's right. Anything else? Without believing in the Trinity, we don't believe we don't believe the full Bible. Yeah, it. True. It. Anything else? I believe in the Trinity because Jesus keeps the Spirit. Holy Spirit for us. For our relationship. For unity. Anything else? When you pray to God, wow, God is there. The Trinity, God the Father. Pray in Jesus' name and the Holy Spirit helps us pray. That's amazing. And you know that you're saved. Period. Why? Because God the Father planned the salvation. Jesus Christ came and he redeemed and bought all of us. And the Holy Spirit now has applied his truth to all of us so that we can understand and trust Jesus Christ as Jesus our Savior. So wow, the Trinity, if there were no Trinity, salvation would be impossible. It would be impossible. Okay? So, we don't really have, our time's already almost gone, but I'll put this in the video for you to read, okay? Let me close in prayer. Anybody want to volunteer to close in prayer? <laughs> All right, I'll pray, Francis. Father, we're so thankful, Lord, for the Bible, the scriptures that teach us about you in the Trinity. Wow. It is a mystery, and there are many things that we don't understand, but we feel overwhelmed and awed, and we trust you more, and we pray more, 
we feel peace knowing that you have done all the work through each person, all of it. And that's your work of salvation to establish the work of the Trinity as God. Wow. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay.